Echo is one of the most popular web frameworks uh, in Go. Um, in terms of features, it has also quite nice um, features like um, optimized routers, uh, support for HTTP2, um, uh, data rendering, middlewares. Uh, so we, we, when we will check other frameworks, we will see like this is, uh, most of it is, is kind of um, standard set of features you will see in most of the popular frameworks. Um, but it's also important that uh, you have basics included, so you don't have to build it yourself uh, when you are uh, delivering another like business um, product. So like, I mean, you can focus on, on, on deliveries. Uh, in terms of technical documentation, it has uh, quite nice documentation. It's easy to understand. Uh, for new joiners, uh, it's also quite friendly. Uh, you can easily get started. Uh, and in terms of also coverage, uh, I would say it's quite like extensive. Like you can see uh, a lot of examples on different topics. Um, like, I mean, why it's important because you, you like, when it's open source, you can also read from from source code. But you, when you have some examples already in documentation, it's always uh, like easy and then like lowers uh, learning curve. So the, which is all, all very important. And um, in terms of like popularity, which is not main criteria, but it's still important because you want to use something which is frequently updated. So we have uh, like Echo Framework has uh, almost 22k stars on GitHub. Uh, I believe it's second most popular framework, but I might might be mistaken. Uh, in terms of forks, uh, it's 2k forks, uh, and also which is also important releases. Uh, last minor release was 25 days ago, uh, which is 10th of January 2022. And in terms of major release, it's 20 September uh, 2021. Uh, so I would say it's, it's also quite frequently updated. Um, our first step with Echo Framework will be uh, to initialize our project structure. Uh, but before we start this, uh, let's uh, check our uh, repository structure. So at the moment we have uh, only two frameworks, uh, Echo and Iris. So when you are on the root of the uh, repository, you can always get the most recent state uh, for this uh, project. If you scroll down, you can see what was implemented at the moment. Um, so by the time of recording of this video, I have a uh, CRUD endpoints implemented. There is also some paging. Also, this one is in progress. So this icon means that this is in progress. Uh, and this means that for Echo, we have uh, CRUD endpoints, uh, Docker file, and, and paging uh, implemented. Uh, but our, for our first step, uh, first uh, like hands-on coding uh, step will be, uh, we will have a step-by-step, -step, um, like source code for each, each step separately. So I will move on and add a first step. Uh, it will be in a uh, step-by-step -step directory and echo uh, framework, so name of the framework. So we are at the uh, 001 step. So let's create this directory. So next thing we will do, um, so we can always actually, um, so for some repeating parts, we can always uh, use the like latest state. Um, so here, what we need is, um, so we don't need for now server.go make file or docker file. We need to initialize our go structure. Actually, we will need server.go, but very like simple one. Um, so let me just check a uh, name. So it's called demo app. So this is, we will use for all frameworks, we will use this name. Uh, and I will move forward and say go mod init. So I need to make sure that I am in the right directory. Uh, which is uh, this one, step 001 init project. And our uh, model name will be um, demo app. Yes. Yeah, so this, 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 this command will initialize our project, go project, so we can check what's inside. 
Uh, so now we have only go.mod uh, and what we can do actually, so let's open this folder separately. So Visual Studio Code is always easy to navigate. Um, and now let's check what we have. So at the moment it's quite empty. We have only name of the project and version of the Go. Well, uh, let's move forward and add our uh, server.co. Uh, um, and let's say, um, so let me see what I use here. So main, yes. So we will have main package. So for, for this part, I will add very simple uh, main function. And the next part we will have um, our um, echo integrated with into our project. So let me add this one. So we will write down print hello world, of course, and we can close. So when I save Visual C code, uh, we'll uh, also import a uh, needed package. So I use FMT, so it will import FMT. Uh, we can check this uh, and then uh, go run it. Yeah, we should see hello world. And in the next part, we will uh, add um, our echo framework, import our echo framework. So now when we have our um, initial project initialized, our next step is to add our dependency, which is uh, echo framework at the moment. Uh, so let's do this. First, I need to check. Um, so I need to get this uh, installation path. Uh, for Echo, the la last version is uh, v4, so this is what we need. Uh, I will go to my terminal, uh, make sure that you are in the first step, uh, which can be any empty directory with go mode initialized. And then we can do, um, yeah, not this one, go get, and this part here. So this will import this package. So I can use it locally in my project. Uh, let's move to the project structure now. Uh, so this is a Visual Studio code with, uh, with the same directory open. Um, and if I now check go mode file, I see that uh, I have some uh, required dependencies. Uh, this means that we can already start using echo package. For this, I will need to import it first. Uh, again, I will use the same path. So this time we need to be paying a bit attention because uh, so this is version number, and when I use this package, uh, I can skip this uh, last part. So I will do like this. I will initialize uh, first like application echo application. So this can be done with um, echo dot new command. So in this variable, I will have my echo application. Uh, next step, what we want to do is. Um, uh, on our root directory, root path, uh, we want to have uh, an empty application which will return uh, hello world in string. So let's do this. Um, for this, what I need to do, I need to initialize any get endpoint. Uh, our path or URL will be root. Um, then I need to provide a function, handler function. Uh, for now, I will use anonym function. Later, we can uh, se have separate function uh, for each endpoint. So this will be function. So we will need to have uh, provide echo dot context. Uh, we can actually make ourselves familiar with this uh, by using the source code. Always keep in mind that this is open source, so we can check source code anytime. Uh, so this is a function uh, semantics that we need. So we need context, echo context, and error. Um, so we have context variable, uh, type of the echo context, and we will need to return um, error. Then, so we are still in, in this method, right? So we need to open this function. Um, and to return a string, uh, this context provides a string method. Uh, first, uh, we can check again. 
So first is code, like status code, and second parameter is a uh, string that we want to render. Um, so let's go back and so for context, uh, for the status code, we can use HTTP package and say status OK. Um, and then uh, we have our uh, string. Uh, let's say hello echo, actually. Yeah, so this one needs to be imported. So when I save, uh, Visual Studio Code will import it by, for, for myself, uh, for, for me. So now we have net HTTP package. So now when we have our endpoint initialized, the last step that we need to do is uh, actually start our application. And for this, I will use app dot, look, I mean, let's start with, uh, for now, just a basic uh, version. So it will be 8080 port. So this method will start it, but this method returns error. So we can ideally also log this error. Uh, and I can log it with application logger, uh, which is default logger provided in Echo. And if there is any error, we will stop application so it can be fatal. And this is this is it. So now let's go to the terminal and try to run this application. Yeah. So now we have uh, our web application working on this port. Uh, we can also see some additional information like Echo's version. Uh, and link to the uh, frameworks documentation. Uh, this also means that we can move here and restart. So this is uh, our application with one single endpoint uh, on the root path. And the last step, which you can actually skip, uh, will be uh, committing this um, state, this step. So what I, what I will do, I will stop. Uh, I will add all the changes to my, um, so I will actually open another pane. Um, so let's move back uh, to root, like, yeah. So I will, what I will do, I will add all changed files and then say echo um, step 001 um, and then push this. Uh, before, let me check. Uh, I want to check if I don't have any um, unneeded files, unnecessary files here. Um, yeah, so. And by doing so, uh, now it's on repository. So if you want to just uh, copy past, um, you can go to step, echo, uh, step by step, echo and step uh, 001 in it project. So this will be the stage that we did in this part of the tutorial. Um, and you can copy paste.